now it's my turn to give uh, just uh, a little uh, bit of an overview of our activities here in Magdeburg. Um, I just want to show uh, one field uh, of our activity where we're using uh, CST Suite or especially Micro Studio for our simulations and uh, try to accelerate this whole uh, evaluation process for courts. Mostly uh, now our activities are more in evaluation than in design and uh, uh, creating new core structures, uh, which is also now part of this talk. So, and yeah, it works. Mostly uh, we, we're doing SAR estimation in our uh, working group. So also prototypes were in uh, some of our research activities. The, the main objective for our near future is for a new uh, B1 excitation concepts for ultra high field MRI systems. And in Magdeburg, the main objective for coils right now are head coils because we are a neuro uh, research uh, site, so mostly our head coils, like also most of the other ultra high field sites, have a, a very uh, big focus for, for head um, and maybe some other parts. Um, but Usually the, the head is one of the interesting and, and uh, enriched concepts. So if we starting the story from the beginning, um, usually on clinical systems, you don't have to care for all these uh, evaluation stuff because it's already done by the manufacturer uh, because those clinical systems have just one uh, transmit coil inside, it's the body coil. So, and for this uh, body coil, all the safety uh, evaluation is already done. Um, uh, so, we have here some two different kinds. The, the 1.5 MRI, 1.5 Tesla MRI whole body system is now already the working horse. Now it's uprising since several years the free Tesla, where for, for also most of the body parts it's uh, very nice, but may in some parts like the abdomen there are some inhomogeneities where some radiologists prefer for those kind of uh, uh, procedures uh, the 1.5 Tesla, because then it's more homogeneous in the abdomen. Uh, so, but finally it's uh, always a combination in clinical system that you have the, the, the body core for transmit for your generating of your B1 plus field and for receive you have some a lot of, of receive core. So I, I think most of the uh, manufacturer provide for their systems more than 60 cores in-house uh, by the manufacturer. So, there are also a lot of uh, coil manufacturers that also provide additionally coils for those kinds of systems. So, minimum you come up to 100 coils per uh, arch architecture for 1.5 and free Tesla. Coils that are for each part of the body give a good filling factor and a high signal to noise ratio. <clears throat> so, this field is already good uh, observed from, from the manufacturer itself. <clears throat> but um, yeah, just given for for those kinds who had not really uh, the idea of some MRI, the main part, of course, is the magnet, radiant coil, and body coil. So and then the body coil has the function for excitation of the V1 field. Um, but if we come to ultra high field, this kind of body coil is not provided. So there are several uh, experimental um, uh, methods to, to uh, introduce a new concept. We are one of our partners use uh, or um, designed some uh, ring antennas to uh, make a selected excitation and reduce uh, the SAR with this way. But 
Now there's no standard at Ultra High Fluid where you can do a whole body excitation. It's all things are experimental. Manufacturers don't show up that they will provide in the near future some kind of concept. So this is also in-house design. Uh, the, but if you come to Ultra High Fluid, you have the problem uh, that the SAR will increase by a square with the B1, B0 field strength. So, and the safety regulations are a little bit, um, safety regulations are always the same, but for, for ultra high field, you are focusing for the maximum locus are, and usually at uh, uh, normal clinical systems with body call, you just uh, taking the point of view for the whole body are so there you're using um, just the weight of the patient and divided by the power you put in. Does it say so in the regulation? From my point. Hmm? In, in which regulation? In the IEEE, IEC regulations. Different for, 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 no, 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 it's not different. It's just uh, for, for, for body call usage for oh. clinical systems. So, and um, to do uh, a maximum local R calculations, you need uh, biological models. Uh, they provide, several years ago, uh, segmented by MRI data sets, and uh, it, in a combination with biological models and uh, field simulation, you can calculate a uh, a good and validated uh, SAR field or SAR distribution where you have to focus where are the hotspots because the, 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 at, if you have on, on normal fields strains uh, clinical system 1.5 tester you have a nearly more homogeneous distribution of your RF power in the tissue but at ultra high field throughout the wavelengths it comes to more focusing for hotspot. The hotspot problem increases. So, <clears throat> but there's also another point uh, for, for designing uh, because the problem right now that we have with CST is um, they provide an interface that you can import uh, voxel models uh, generated mostly by MRI data sets. Um, but you don't have any um, system internal colli uh, um, uh, uh, that you that interference uh, warning that you are in the material collision detection huh? collision collision detection. yeah right I don't find the word so collision detection so if you uh, overlap with your material uh, you don't only if you really check up. Then, then you see it. And the problem is, if you're then doing your mesh design, you um, have a, in the older versions of CST, for example, there was a mesh priority for each material. So if one material has a lower priori priority, it will, and, uh, will override by a material with a higher priority, and then it fills up the whole mesh cell with this material instead of the other that you have to care for, for, for this border uh, interaction. The other way is to say, okay, I don't uh, risk this point. i also doing the close-up stuff, like in this case, uh, dielectric pets, also in the voxel model. It's, it's a lot of work. Christian Bruns did this work uh, for, for this case, for, for the evaluation for uh, dielectric pets. But then you are sure that you have no... Uh, interference between those two worlds uh, in the final mesh grid so but uh, usually for our MRI system and most of the other this uh, for forehead scanning we use the uh, Nova Medical 32 channel head call which uh, provides a good quality and um, here we get from the paper of Toyweiser also the um, the dimensions of the um, of the transmit call because this kind of call consists of two calls. 
the inner receive call, 30 channel receive call, um, and the outside transmit call. Um, that only the construction of uh, those elements, because it is a bandpath or hybrid bird cage architecture, it is provided by this paper, but not really the matching and tuning. And you could not find out because uh, it will not allow uh, from the uh, manufacturer that you can just take your fingers on. The only way is then to took uh, the connector and use uh, some special adapter that you can measure also the, um, uh, the, the, the Q value of your transmit call. But from our experience, the Q value was not that high. And from our think this procedure was mostly from uh, the idea to reduce the coupling between uh, the inner uh, receive call to the outer uh, tra transmit call. Um, because this is also one big problem that you have, the coupling, and then you lose also signal-to-noise ratio by the coupling between those coils, close-up coils. Um, yes. So we have here also an example also for this uh, dielectric pads. Uh, it's all done by Andreas Bitz uh, in, a, in a cooperation project. And um, yeah, you can use, uh, you see, that we uh, decide to design this very simple and clear architecture with a whole port concept. Usually nobody will do this uh, procedure in, uh, in this way because you say only the important components I do ports and the rest I use lumped elements because it generates a lot of data by, by final uh, combination uh, in this uh, project if you do it in the full port simulation, you're getting a whole project with around 100 gigabyte by, uh, by your field monitors because you get for each port one field monitor data set. And then how much field monitors you activate, it generates a lot. But this is uh, not unusual. For, for some projects, people have... It's not too big. Yeah, so, some people have uh, 500 gigabytes for their data set. You know, so, it's a lot of data that you generate. It's a data war. So finally, talk to the fMRI people. They make much more. Data. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You're right. You're right. From this point, <laughs> let's let's stick to the to the project. This is a project. Um, I was uh, I'm not the leader of this project because it's a uh, main topic of the uh, PhD thesis of my colleague Johannes Malo. Right now he's in San Diego. Uh, in a in a uh, he was in San Diego. Now he's maybe in a flight back to to us. Uh, but um, his project is uh, for, for safety evaluation of uh, this coil with different position because if you think about uh, sticking, uh, putting some, some different stuff into it, you change the position of the subject. And uh, we, uh, Johannes decided then to check up for, for different kind of positions in all three uh, directions. Uh, mostly the Z direction is a very important point and also the Y direction because in the normal usage you have different size of heads and then you also have uh, sometimes pillows, bigger and smaller pillows so the position will be never exact the same. You have always a variation and uh, we decide to variate by 45 positions in uh, oh, one centimeter step wide if I remember this right. So, and for this, he decided to uh, design some evaluation process for, for this kind of uh, procedure. Of course, usually you have the motivation and then uh, you decide which kind of software you use. Usually the software you already buy, uh, you have been bought. Um, and then you have to decide which kind of body model you use and cat model did you get provided by the manufacturer this kind of cat model usually they don't give you nothing but if you have a good corporation already then they give you something uh, and then you starting to build this whole thing and uh, start then with co-simulation and by the co-simulation you have the, the absolute flexibility that you can tune and match 
by the established network that you have done, perfectly fine. And also then calculate the field monitor uh, or fields for, for this kind of uh, matching and tuning uh, um, values. So finally, if you do this all right, you can make your um, SAR evaluation, V1, S parameters, all these uh, key values that you are interested in. But if you then decide to make a parameter sweep, it's getting, uh, takes a lot of time if you do it in, in, in a full port simulation. The usual way was in the past that you say, okay, I make another project where I replace my ports by lumpet elements. But in the past it was not that, it works not that fine. You get always different uh, results and then sometimes the meshing was changing. So there was a lot of, of problems. Uh, so, but we found uh, in, in a way that we could use another uh, step up. But before you can start with this um, parameter sweep, you have to check for important uh, factors for your uh, evaluation process. One and very important point is the mesh grid. Um, usually in the past we had the problem that uh, in 2013, if I remember right, Johannes uh, designed this whole course and make the mesh up and uh, did the whole uh, full port simulation for all ports and then he showed me the S parameters for an empty coil and then he saw two groups of, of S11 parameters uh, exactly two groups and he said it could not uh, it has some problems with the mesh and uh, he, he checked the mesh up and it was not symmetrically and um, after he was thinking a lot of some weeks he decided to do a manual mesh with uh, external structure. He um, used a, a vacuum block, put this totally in the coil, and then make a local mesh for this vacuum block. So the, the vacuum block itself was not considered for simulation, but the mesh was forced to this vacuum block. And for this, he gets a, a better symmetrically mesh, and uh, by this, uh, then the S parameters was also the same. For all ports, S parameters were nice. So then uh, we, we used this also for, for the voxel models and it gives us a, little, a good uh, compromise between numbers of mesh cells and uh, simulation time because the automatic mesh in the first uh, time has, uh, I think, 50% of more mesh cells. But, uh, Worst the results. So that was, uh, yeah, if you just let the simulation auto measure them. So you always have to check up. Meshing is a, a very important point, and usually you cannot let the, the, the software do it itself. You have to check up you, to be really sure that it works uh, for your uh, result accuracy. So, and then of course you have your co simulation flexible and tuning and matching. Here we see some example for uh, a multi-channel, eight-channel uh, or eight-element, I always say channel, but it's usually more better than you say element coil. And um, for this, you can, doing your, your evaluation in field, in the one field, and of course, a selective uh, in, in the uh, tissue. For each tissue you can check up where is the hotspot and so on. You can focus for the most stuff that you are interested in. But for, for, for co-simulation, what I already told you, you are really trapped in a time problem because uh, if you simulate a lot of ports for a change in the 3D uh, environment, it takes more time for you. Uh, the, the big advantage in co-simulation by the, by the end is that you have a more flexibility for tuning and matching and your system is also non-resonant because it's separated in some, some smaller groups and then combine it in a later process. So, <clears throat> but uh, with this 
Uh, it's for a parameter suite because uh, the one, the four port simulation, if I remember right, was around 30 hours for, for all 48 ports. This, this call consists of 48 ports. So it took a while and, and generates also a lot of data. So for a parameter sweep, you need more than a month uh, for all positions. So, and then we decide uh, another for another uh, step to use this in, in, in Microwave Studio, it calls transient task, where you can uh, simulate your, your uh, complete model just by the uh, network uh, transmit ports not by the in micro studio consisting transmit port. And if you do this simulation, the um, ports in Microwave Studio will replace by the values that you are here connected in the, by the impedance values that you are here uh, connected in the network, in the design studio network. Because right now, uh, this combination is very easily because in, in, in the right now status, Microwaves or, or CST is the only uh, software manufacturer that provides a full core simulation in their uh, uh, product. Uh, the other way, what also some Koslov did in his core simulation paper, is using ADS, Agilent uh, Core Simulator, Circuit Core Simulator, which uh, that works also for this process. But you have to pay also additionally for this product to or, buy it. Hmm? Or you just do it yourself in MATLAB. Or you do it yourself in your MATLAB. Right, right. Which is even cheaper and even faster. That's, that's the, the and point. I forgot to mention before, uh, I can tell everyone, a guy from London, Arian Bikiri, he wrote a paper recently about some SAR stuff. Okay. And he implemented the whole course simulation yeah. himself in MATLAB and he gives the code out. For everyone who wants to have it. Okay. So then you just have to buy the MATLAB license. <laughs> no, you just you just look at those maybe hundred lines of code and then you write it in Python. Oh okay. <laughs> but I, it's Python fast enough? Of course. Okay. I'm not a programmer expert, so Yes. There was the name of the guy where is it uh uh, where can you get it? <laughs> I'll I'll tell you after the talk. Okay. <laughs> because yeah. I don't want to. No, no, no. That's, uh, we are open discussion. This is this is fine. Now the the point was uh, for this you see there's a lot of ports and uh, you save time if you're doing just uh, the simulation um, for the excitation port. A bucket port has uh, it can work with one. Excitation port, but usually to, to save, uh, to have a better power efficiency, you're using a CP mode and then you're doing it that with, with two ports. And uh, we also designed this for you. So, but to have this, uh, to, to have this done in, the, uh, in this way, we have to uh, also stick in uh, a, a micro strip as a phase shifter uh, because it was not provided. By the uh, by, this uh, operation to make a phase shift, uh, just tell them like you make it in the whole call simulation that you take port one with this amplitude and this phase and port two with this. So that was not possible at this at the time. You, so you have to stick up for for microstep. But I saw in 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 from 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 example in the talks of Andrea Spitz, that's also the usual way. That they um, using or uh, that they completely design their coil network in nature, uh, also with this uh, help re replacement by MicroStep, uh, that they just copy the whole uh, circuit in Micro Studio. That they don't. What they have in reality. Yeah, what they have in reality. You know what's even easier? That when you take that thing, whatever it is, yeah. measure the S matrix. On a network analyzer and put it in as an S parameter object. Yeah. And you have all the losses and all imperfections and don't have to worry about anything. Yeah, but usually they, they design then the whole network. Okay. And uh, I also talked to, to uh, CST people that they uh, have to provide this kind of phase shifter uh, because it's nothing more than a phase shifter because you don't have any micro strip in your network. It's just to help support. But, they, but they include that, they have that in there. 
Okay. Uh, or did they just <coughs> it because you asked? Uh, no, usually they make it with just some some micro steps. I, I did it, and I said, tell him most people use this uh, to make just a phase shift because they provide the phase shifter in, in, in mm. Design Studio, uh, but uh, this phase shifter is usually for frequency domain because then you have just a frequency, the phase shift, and it works for time domain. It's it say no, not possible because it thinks you're using the phase shift for all frequency, but it, it's not uh, that the way we use it. We just know that we just use the phase shift for the special frequency, and, and they say just make a, a, a block element where you just give the frequency and the phase shift, and everything's nice. So here you always have to check is it right? A microstep, you have to calculate epsilon r value. So this is uh, easy that that they can provide this. But the more bigger problem was the combination uh, of of data because right now um, you have to do it manually. Uh, this because right now you get two fields and to have a circular polarized field you have to combine it and this was a little bit uh, we have to do it outside but now uh, in, in 2015 service pack 2 they also provide the field combination internally by micro studio so very nice because before the, the usually combination in design studio and in micro studio was not supported transient task operations. So that was, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure why, but now they provide this. And uh, now you can combine um, this for, 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 uh, for this. You, you get for each port your S parameters, for each excitation port your S parameters and your fields. Could and I build a simple built-in power splitter for microstrips and capacitors for that? Zero ninety degree phase, and then you only have one port. Right, your... right. In, di in this, in this case, yeah, yeah. Uh, we we also did this, uh, but the the problem is what you have to care for is um, that your um, feel or that your power balance can change, and then you cannot measure it. That's the point. Right now, uh, with this setup, you have two ports. Uh, like at a network analyzer, you can measure it really easily and then through the network and you see uh, if I change the if I change from from human to uh, an oil phantom there's also a change uh -huh. in the power balance so of course uh, but if you make the usually set up also on this call because you have one power source and then you have a power splitter in the phase shifter you cannot measure the this uh, by a network analyzer purely because you measure also the power splitter and both ports at the same because you have just one connection and you get some parameter but it's a combination of both ports this is this is the problem and if there the energy balance change it's difficult then to upscale your fields to the power what you want to because you need some power balance information so there this this is a point but with this, you can uh, speed up again by a factor of two if you use just one excitation. The, the big problem, what you have to care for, is uh, what in the past nobody was always disliked and everybody was happy to have co-simulation integrated, is the resonance system. Because if a system is highly resonant, you can just reduce this and putting a lossy load into you see the energy curve and uh, the rippling of the decay of the field energy. And we have checked this and it was really interesting to see that if you stop this at 30 dB, which is really just below 0.1% is in the system, uh, energy is in the system, and then you stop it at 100 dB, so it means everything is gone. Uh, and then compare the field values that you get, it's more up to several percent difference. So, and this could not be uh, in, in that point. That you mean several percent? Uh, around six to eight percent in the field difference. That makes sense. Yeah, of course it, it makes sense, but it makes not sense with the energy curve that you yes. have. Because then the energy curve at 30% could not be right. So 30% is 30 dB. I mean, sorry, 
Trade EDB. Could not be it's right. Why, why not? Because some of the energy, because uh, this, this procedure to check up for the energy in the field is that it just checks the field energy, right? I'm not the perfect uh, in, 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 in the simulation field. Uh, I have several talks with, with CSD and also with Andreas Bitz. From our point of view, this value can, uh, it's, it's some kind of a volume integral of the whole field energy. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. And then, if you um, have energy uh, stuck in, in, some, in, some, uh, in the metal as a current, it's not field. So it will not uh, part, because it's a resonator, you have elements that, that uh, save uh, energy. Uh, yes, but they save it over one oscillation cycle. And the problem, the problem yes. is uh, the value is correct at 30 dB. So overall, when they tell you the value is minus 30 dB, that means minus uh, 30 dB of the energy is gone. The only problem is what is happening, and I can show you that uh, Later on, because I, I had an ISMM presentation okay. on the for, for, for the poster. Yeah. The problem is while you simulate, yeah. uh, the field values. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they integrate over time, right? They have the yeah, time yeah. response and they integrate over time. Yeah. And what's basically happening is something like that. They go to one value, but they oscillate around it. Of and course, oscillations get smaller and smaller and smaller while it approaches. And then when you cut up before, you have, but for some values you are below your average, and for others you are above it. Right. Yeah, but but with a for for thirty dB, five percent difference, six percent difference, that makes. But it's. I'm not. I, I can show you this. Uh, uh, this point. What what I mainly mentioned. Also, also the the measured input power will be different because he calculates the input power from the current that is not completely integrated at minus 30 dB, so... Maybe. Okay. So, anyway, the results of these uh, experiments, we, we took uh, for, for this kind of experiment um, all four models, but we could also extend to, to more, because right now uh, uh, you can use up to 10 biological models that you can use in Microsoft Studio uh, interface. And here we just use for this uh, work, or Johannes, my colleague, used this uh, with four models with 45 positions, so it's um, 180. Uh, hmm? Just one more question. Simulations. Those simulations were with two ports now each? Yes. 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 And the other ones were all capacitors, so they were resonant again. Basically. Right, right. It's written. But so it in this longer. case, yeah, yeah. But in this case, we had uh, the simulation was completely done to 100, uh, 110 dB. So the, the the coil or the energy was totally uh, decay on this. So the the simulation right now took approximately um, about six to eight hours. It's less in compared to the whole port simulation uh, with more than 30 hours of yeah, yeah. whole port simulation. When it's, and uh, just one more thing, if I may. If you do the port simulation, right. then the convergence is much more important than when you have a resonant simulation. Absolutely, absolutely. If so, you, if so you, if you, for a resonant you, system, you don't need 100 dB. No, no, but we want to be sure that it's uh, not ripple again, that your value is exactly uh, clear. So, because if you see the energy curve at 30 dB, it ripples, it depends also on the load, uh, about 8 to 10 dB could be possible. Usually for the smaller models, the stronger rippling of the energy decay instead of the bigger uh, head models, because they consume more energy and, and making uh, uh, or decree the Q value that that's this resonator effect will be uh, lower. So, but we have to see some, some uh, example models that the, uh, the hotspot uh, will affect from the position change, especially in that direction. Uh, was it changing in the hotspot? We have here the Duke and here uh, one of the small models, the Telonius of the virtual family. And you see 
uh, hotspots will affect by changing in the position. Um, yeah. Let's conclude from, from our point. Uh, the the uh, bio EAM field simulation is very helpful, especially for coil evaluation. And um, in this thing, we save really uh, time. And I think interesting will be also to see uh, if we're getting to this thermal simulation, if uh, all groups also go much more in this thermal simulation uh, field because there, uh, from our point, is the higher opportunity to uh, set the, the SAR regulations to a, a more flexible values because for thermal simulation right now, there is the possibility that we can getting better and higher SAR limits for, for our users. Really? I have yes. read exactly the opposite. Really? That you get higher temperatures, even though that you get temperatures above the limits, even though you are below the SAR limits. Okay. From because in, from my point of view, with our static models, we not include all the uh, cooling process that the human body is have to because uh, there there's a good was a good slide from Tilman Wittig for for thermal solver uh, introduction where you can see that. Uh, if a human body comes to 38 degree heat up, there the, the blood flow increases dramatically. That's uh, to to. Uh, you mean local temperature or? Uh, or core temperature. Ooh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But this effect is clear that if the temperature, if you get outside uh, heating up, the the body reacts on this by uh, increase the blood flow and the blood flow sorts uh, if you have a local yeah, if you have a local heating up the blood flow increase at this point and try to to cool and and having a higher flow by uh, and try to to fight against this heating up by increasing the blood flow so yes uh, i think from from our point uh, the uh, field simulation brings us closer <coughs> Or for ultra high field section, this this especially seven Tesla, more into a clinical perspective. Uh, just to do, let know, um, we founded this this uh, forum in 2010, our MREM forum, and uh, we want also provide some additional tutorials to it. Um, I think uh, in this point we also. Uh, work together with CST and also provide some, some example for, especially for Microwave Studio, uh, a bird cage coil and a surface coil, which is right now provided in form. So if there are any questions, we are welcome. So I want to thank to our cooperation partners. Thank you for your attention.